So just four days ago, I was talking about a player called Johnny Cardozo, and I was saying I can't believe no big team has shown any interest in him. No big team has any interest in picking him up. I said how Liverpool need a DM and this could be a good one. He's even in the thumbnail of my video about Liverpool four days ago. I made videos about him when Man United were looking at DM a month ago. I made a video a month ago saying that Liverpool should sign him. And I was like, no one's picking him up. Okay, he's only been at Real Betis six months. Maybe he needs a bit more time. But then, boom, out of nowhere, it looks like Tottenham could be making a move for Johnny Cardozo. Not maybe now, but in future. For Rich Romano said this, Tottenham are closing in on a deal to agree a priority option to sign Johnny Cardozo from Real Betis in the future. Tottenham will also buy a percentage on future sale in case they decide against signing him. Now, this is a bit of a weird one because they haven't signed him. They might not necessarily sign him, but it's very smart because if they decide not to sign him and he's a really good player and you're thinking, why haven't Tottenham decided to, to, to sign him? And he goes for like 80 million and Tottenham have like a 20% selling clause. At least you get like 16 million extra as part of the La Celsa deal. If you do decide to sign him, and there's reports saying that he could be available for 30 million next year and you have first priority, then you've probably signed, in my opinion, the best up and coming uh, up and coming DM out there. Now I've spoke about this guy a lot. This is this was my video from a month ago when we knew Liverpool were going to sign a DM, but they didn't actually in the end. And I suggested four players. I suggested Johnny Cardozo, Angela Stiller. I also suggested Supermende and Varela. About two days later, it was confirmed that Liverpool were going for Supermende. When they walked away from Superman Day, I did a video four days ago that Liverpool should look at uh, Cardozo, Stiller or Varela as their DM option. They're the three best DM options in the market. And I said, with Cardozo, I think he's an unbelievable player. It's just that he's only been in Europe for six months. So there is elements of a risk there. But I said Liverpool should take it. I said, you know, I should look at him if they can't get a guard for the right price. And well, it could be Tottenham. Obviously, did a video analysing this guy. And I'm going to speak about Cardozo. And I'm going to speak about why I like this player, why I've been speaking about this player for a while and why this could be a really good signing for Tottenham and what is the plan behind Tottenham maybe buying and maybe not buying him. What, why is this smart? How does he fit into Angeball? What kind of player is he? So Romano said this last night, Tottenham a complete agreement with Real Betis for priority option Johnny Cardozo in the future. Cardozo has agreed uh, has agreed, and documents are being prepared right now with Spurs in case Tottenham Hotspur decide against signing Cardozo, they have a future sale, of course. So he might not necess necessarily come to Tottenham if he has a bad season this year. I'm sure Tottenham don't go for him. But I do think Cardozo, Archie Gray, Lucas Bergvall, Saar, I mean, that that you're building a very good young midfield. You know, Kulo and Madison can play really well in advanced roles as well. You think of like Cardozo, Archie Gray, Lucas Bergvall, midfield three in three years' time, they will hit their potential. I still say it to this day. I think Tottenham had a I think Tottenham fans are negative about their transfer window online, not all, some, but I think Tottenham have a better transfer window than they thought. It's a little bit like they are investing for the future and, and maybe they needed more for the now. And I think Pedro Neto was a big miss. But I think Olia Burt could be a, a good deal. Solanke can, can be a really good deal for sure. It, that, it's always just a risk with Tottenham and big signings. I think Archie Gray will be good, but he needs time, he needs patience. Also, I think it just gives Basuma a kick up the ass, and I think Basuma's look better in the opening years. I think Tottenham have had a very good window, and I think Cardozo could potentially come in. Now, I'll give you a bit of statistics about him. Data and peace, always my go-to place for statistics. Uh, in 22-23, Cardozo had a higher defensive dual weight than any other Le uh, La Liga midfielder and any other under-25 midfielder in Europe, just to show you how good of a dual winner he is. I mean, he's been compared to like Agate, Palinia. Uh, he's been compared to like Kante in terms of his dual winning abilities. 1v1, winning back the ball, tackling, dual winning. He's one of the best defensive midfielders out there off the ball. And I think now that Tottenham are buying these technically gifted ballers and Lucas Burbo and Archie Gray and the technical ceiling of Tottenham is lifted, even Kuliszewski's good on the ball. Tottenham, I think, miss someone that's really good off the ball midfield. And I think the Tottenham's biggest issue I found is their off the ball in midfield, it's sometimes been open. I think Basuma looked better the last few games, but they've been open off the ball in midfield. They've left the defence exposed. Um, this guy could potentially be that guy that does the off-the-ball work. Archie Gray does the on-the-ball work and the pivot. Lucas Berg will in the future could be more advanced. Maybe maybe you're building something for the future. I think this could be a really good sign for Tottenham Hotspur. You look at the statistics per 90 versus La Liga midfielders. First for defensive duels, fourth for interceptions, fourth for possession, just an interception, seventh for aerial duels, one, tenth for defensive actions. Very good defensively. If you look at him versus under 22 players, because he's 22 in La Liga, first for defensive duels, one, first for interceptions, second for aerial duels, one, second for possession, adjusted tackles, second for block shots, third for defensive actions, third for aerial duels, sixth for assists, sixth for offensive duels, run, seventh for accurate passes and eighth for forward passes. If you compare them to 
all of Europe's top five leagues for players aged 22 or under. First for defensive duels won as any player aged 22 or under in Europe's top five leagues. Third for possession adjusted interceptions. Fourth for aerial duels won. Fifth for aerial duels. Sixth for defensive actions. Sixth for interceptions. And if you look at what Tottenham need, aerial presence, someone off the ball, someone that's a good tackler, someone to improve their defensive vulnerability. And if this guy goes to Tottenham, he's very good in the air, will help Tottenham with set pieces, will clean up at the back. Like he's a player that, I rate very highly. So when Tottenham did that deal, I thought, fair play. So let's talk about him. Let's get into more detail about the player. So Johnny Cardoso's statistically calculated who score characteristic strength says ball interception, error duels, blocking the ball, tackling. He's very good off the ball, but he's good. he was a player that would be a bit more advanced to Guido Rodriguez and actually advance the ball for Tottenham. So it's all about what he does off the ball. Sorry, not Tottenham, Real Betis. I've been talking a little bit about what he'll do off the ball, but I do think on the ball, he can. he's better than people think. He has. He was the primary guy in build-up for Real Betis. His ball progression is good. Um, but obviously, this is why people talk about him off the ball. Tackles, 94th percentile. Interceptions, 99th percentile. Clearance is 90 percentile, aerial duels 96 percentile, and I think Tottenham need that. I think he's what Tottenham need, and I think this would be a really good sign for Tottenham. And look, as you can see, how good he is off the ball. These are his defensive statistics. Tackles and interceptions, 99th percentile as well. Uh, 96 percentile for dribblers tackled. He's very good 1v1. He's very good at covering large spaces. Um, and I think one of the reasons he's so good at this is his, his understanding of the game. I'd say he's one of the smartest defensive midfielders out there. He's got that Rodri IQ where he can read the game so well. Elements of Locatelli is where we can read the game so well. And I think that's what makes him such an intelligent dual winner. He can tackle, he can intercept, he can get his body in line. He's got that frame. He's really physically gifted as an athlete to have those legs and the powerful strides to cover ground, to close down space, to, to make a difference. I think you can see defensively he's good. But I think people focus so much on his defensive ability, they don't realise that he's actually quite good on the ball. His ball retention, his ability to progress play and move the ball quickly is very good because... You can have a DM that's good off the ball, but if they're not good on the ball, it can it can slow down the team, which I think is why Slot doesn't want to end up at Liverpool and why he was looking at Subamende and Gravenberch now playing a six because Gravenberch is good on the ball. But with Cardozo, he's also good on the ball. Now, he does excel physically, ground coverage, dual winning, excels defensively, but I think his awareness and positional awareness to stop attacks is brilliant. And I think of Tottenham and sometimes the positional sense out of possession, how they can be hit on the transition and they can look defensively vulnerable to Tottenham, I think Cazozo could be a really good fit for Tottenham because he can position himself and read the game well. Now, I think Archie Gray is also a really intelligent player that is obviously very raw, but if Archie Gray and Cazozo hit their potential and their partner together in the future, that is very, very dangerous for Tottenham as well because Archie Gray definitely has abilities to become a box-to-box player, not even at the end, if I'm going to be totally honest. And I think Cardozo's ability to sniff out danger could be suited to Tottenham. But obviously, he, Tottenham may say, let's give him another year in Spain, see how he develops. He's only had six months out of Brazil. Let's see how he does. But he's a top ball winner, a top defensive duel winner, but he can be good on the ball. He's comfortable on the ball. He has good passing range. He makes very good decisions on the ball. He's a very clever player, but he can break the lines, pass the ball, carry the ball, um, you know, progress play very, very well. Despite lower stats, despite lower stat percentiles, he's a very good sort of progressive midfielder. Very good in build-up, was tasked with doing this at Real Betis, being an important guy in build-up. Very good link-up, IQ to play quick one-twos quickly and likes to move and progress the ball quickly. I think he's someone that can play the quick one-twos to progress the ball, move the ball quickly, retain the ball. He doesn't often play safe passes. I say as a player, he does go with the safe passes. Retention is good. His possession statistics are not great. But if you've watched him play like I did when I did an analysis on him like two months ago or so for United when I had to do some reports for some work projects, he really did catch my end. He can progress the ball. He can break the lines. He doesn't play too many risky passes, but he can he can definitely do that. He's not bad on the ball. You know, he's physically strong. He's very good off the ball, but on the ball, he retains it. He can pass it. He can recycle it. And he has that Rodri level of intelligence where he can read the game well. He can make the right decision. So to conclude, and this was based off a number of notes, um, is a highly promising uh, prospect. Ideal as a number six. Uh, good physical ability, agility, defensive prowess, very good. Ball progression and passing range, very good. Intelligent, dominant in duels. Uh, only moved to Europe in January after playing, played in Brazil. And some believe he may need a bit more experience before he makes ship to someone like Tottenham, a big club. And maybe that's why big clubs didn't move him, because as good as he's been the last six months, it's only been six months. Joe Gomez is another guy that Wolves brought in from Brazil. and He's been really good for Wolves. The last year or so and maybe that's why Jao Gomez was more linked to a lot of clubs because he's been playing around longer not that he's really a DM he's more of a, a box-to-box 
But, you know, Tottenham seem to be liking these guys that have come from Brazil. Six foot, 22 years old, right footed, good in build up, strong passer, can receive the ball in a half turn, which is what you want in a player. Athletic, agile, agile progresses, great game intelligence and vision. People are saying a potential transfer could be £25 million, pounds, is what a rumour was. And he ticks all the boxes for proper six. I don't know if it'll be that cheap, but he's been compared to Locatelli, Rodri, Jao Polinia, Agata, even Kante by people ranked in the 90th plus percentile in Europe's top five leagues for defensive actions, dual percentage, interceptions and aerial duels. His high energy, disciplined and strong defensive responsibilities have com- made him compared to Agate. He performs simple tasks well and uses his six foot frame effectively as a number six. And his heat map, which I'll show over the next slide, shows that he can lock down the centre of the pitch and effectively do well and he was he played 18 games for Albatis last season and he was barely dribble pass as well and if you look at other things said about him by other people Johnny Cardoza is having a smooth transition after leaving Brazil he's a big he's getting big praise by Pellegrini this was said on February 5th you look at what else has been tweeted back in January when he played a second game for Real Betis you can look at his game numbers here how good he was and impressive he was like uh, Johnny Cardoza has been really really impressive and I think if if he continues his good form and Tottenham can get him for a good price I think it's a very good deal for Tottenham. Tottenham fans let me know your thoughts down below thank you for watching bye